This is Sneaker Gears, my name is Levi, and today we're looking at the top five basketball shoes for mid-2019. Now, we do have quite a few shoes coming out for the remainder of the year, obviously with the new basketball season coming up for the 2019-2020 season, but if you're looking to buy a basketball shoe for the season coming up, and or you wanna see some great deals, because some of these are gonna be discounted with newer models coming out, definitely stay tuned so we can go ahead and give you the best five shoes for the five categories categories of the most cushion, the most support, the best court feel, the best overall, and the best value. So stay tuned. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel as it really does help us out. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so starting off with the best or the most cushion and this is mid 2019 uh, i'm gonna go with the lebron 16. now i like shoes that have options meaning uh, just because it's the lebron 16 they have the high and they have the low so you know if they had a version with knit or not knit i like option just because it gives you a chance to enjoy the shoe but maybe get something that's a little bit better for your preference so i prefer the lows there's quite a few people that prefer the highs i think from performance standpoint Point, the lows are better but that doesn't mean it's best for you so the highs are going to give you a little bit more support they're going to feel a little bit more luxurious and i think they probably have a little more off-court flair with a lot of nice colorways so if you need a little bit more support if you want that knit up or that battle knit definitely go with the highs these are going to be a little bit lighter a little bit more stable but overall the cushion on this is unbelievable so if you want more cushion the team mac millennium is something i definitely can recommend but that is going to be a super mushy really plush ride i'll have a full comparison video between those two because these are right up there but i'm going to give the edge to having the most cushion on the lebron 16. now as a heads up the lebron 17 is coming out soon so you should be able to get 16s on pretty good values the 17 looks to be changing up the cushion setup i don't know if it's going to be bad or worse but i'll definitely let you guys know but for the best cushion of 2019 middle of the year go with the lebron 16. all right on the flip side of that is going to be the best court feel now the court feel options are pretty much an easier take for most companies to do just because court field usually just means less cushion that's kind of the route they took with the zoom freak one we'll have a full review on that coming out soon and that was awful but the best court feel option you can get is going to be a shoe that's hard to find so i'm going to give you guys two options one it's going to be your omni one this i think is the best purely because it's going to be the most well-rounded this is going to give you nice court feel but still have some decent cushion i do have a full review on this so you guys can check it out and this allows you to play quick still have nice impact protection if you're going to have court feel you got to have really good traction now, i don't have a best traction option of these five because all of them are really good traction and these are top two so Omni One, because this is hard to find, the next best option for court feel, you wanna play quick, but you're still getting some nice impact protection, is gonna be your Curry 6 with that full length hover cushion. Now, some people had issues with the fit on this, and if you're having issues with the fit on this, and or you don't like low top, they do have the Under Armour Havoc or Hover Havoc 2. That's gonna be a very similar shoe with a slightly different fit, slightly higher fit. So that's gonna give you a different option, but very similar setup. Uh, I did uh, kind of talk to Nightwing uh, through direct messaging, and I asked him before he did the Havoc, would you call it a kind of a high top or mid top Curry 6? And for him, he's like, that's pretty fair to say. Now, Nightwing's take was he preferred the Curry 6. I haven't played in the Havoc, so I can't say I prefer it, but I can tell you, I really enjoy playing this for court feel. You feel fast. Traction is up there with just being unbelievable. Uh, you can argue durability. I've had any issues, but uh, for the Curry 6, it is just a step below the Omni, just because I think that has a slightly more cushion, even though it still plays fast. This is gonna be a really nice option to have court feel, play quick, but still have a nice impact protection. So even if you're a bigger guy, even if you're a fast explosive player, when you land, this is absorbing that impact really well. So your best court feel for 2019, middle of the year, is gonna be your Omni One, if you're gonna be able to get these, or your Curry Six. All right, so your most supportive shoe, of 2019 is gonna be, and I went back and forth, and this is a close one, is really Jordan brand, 
between the Jordan 33, which is super supportive and I think too much, but I'm gonna give the nod to the Why Not 2. Now, the Why Not 2 just came out with their uh, kind of part 2.5, which you're calling the SE. Last year, they had the Chaos version of the Why Not 1. Uh, this is a super supportive shoe where you have a double, double layer of support everywhere on the shoe. So on the back half, you have kind of this uh, cape that goes around that fe really feels like you have an ankle brace on. You have this side strap that actually you can undo, which I've seen people, if you don't need all that support, that gives you another layer on top of the lacing. And then you have this flap right here as well that you can tighten and really feel that support and that lockdown. Uh, on top of that, you have a wide base. You have a shoe that because it has a separated outsole uh, and it has a triple heel cup, you're locked in. If you land on someone's foot, it really holds you in so you have the least chance of an injury. Now, the flip side, this is a lot of support. I recommend this to six guys, and only one of them was like, hey, dude, these feel too heavy. This is too much support for me. And I told them, like, yeah, this is a really supportive shoe. Now, the Jordan 33 is going to be close to having the support, if not maybe more, but I just think it's overkill for the support. But if you're looking for the most supportive shoe, whether you're dealing with injuries, coming back from an injury, just want something where your foot feels safe, go with the Why Not 2, and or if you really need the Jordan 33, even though I think this is going to be a better overall shoe. Now, the Jordan 33 SE, I did try on. Here's a photo that, I don't know if I posted it on Instagram. It is a lighter version of this with a lot less support and a little bit more flexibility so for that person that i recommended these and where they said hey it felt a little bit too heavy and too much support you're getting everything great about this shoe but taken down so it's going to be enjoyable for more people for my personal preference i didn't get the sc just because i enjoy playing in this shoe now this i really do like for mostly full court runs uh, i don't really enjoy it casually as much because it's just too much shoe and even just playing around shooting around i'd rather wear something else even though obviously this is still a great shoe but for full court this thing is awesome but this is going to be your top supportive shoe of mid 2019. All right, so your best all around shoe. So this is a shoe and I try to do something every year. I don't know if this is gonna rain for the rest of the year, but the best all around shoe is something where, it, it, let's say I'm talking to someone who wants to sponsor a basketball team, a youth basketball team, a high school, and they're just gonna buy one shoe for the whole team. So you have all positions, all sizes. What shoe can that be where it's gonna cater to the most people? And that's gonna be the KD12. This is a max cushion relative setup with really good traction and if not really good very consistent i really love the consistency of this traction where even if you have dust on this it's something where you feel the dust collecting it gives you nice feedback you're never in danger of slipping or not being able to trust it uh, the cushion with the double stacked heel and the full length zoom right above below your foot as well as having the holes in the outsole that gives it the lightweight, gives it the flexibility. This is just an amazing overall shoe. The only drawback or improvements Nike can make on this, I have no idea what they're doing for the KD13, is if you have a wide toe box. It's a narrow shoe. Now I have a wide midfoot, so because of that, the width of my foot, and I don't know if you guys can see where, you can almost tell where this sticks out where my foot is, where it's molded pretty nicely. But if you have a wide toe box, this foam kind of teeth coming up here just may not work for your foot. Everyone else, you're really going to enjoy it. The fact that it has a more traditional lacing system, which Nike hasn't really done for the KD line from the 9, 10, and 11, really aids in a nice lockdown fit. The support is surprising, and this is one of the more supportive KDs outside of the KD7. So you really have something for everybody. So if you're a guard, you have something lightweight, you're low to the ground, good support. If you're a big man, you have a lot of cushion. You have, again, that support where you feel safe in the shoe. The mid top is probably one of the only things people have asked saying hey i wish this came in a low and again that's more personal preference it doesn't affect the performance of a shoe but i do prefer low tops myself and uh, dealing with a few injuries i have found myself gravitating to more mids and more supportive shoes something like the why not too overall you guys can buy this shoe knowing that for the most part you're really going to enjoy it 
short of if you have a wide toe box, where even if you go up half a size, uh, it does break in some that might work for you, but just keep that in mind. I did a 13 in this. I'm usually a 12 and a half or 12 wide. And so that is kind of going up half a size for me. And this fits amazing. But again, I do have a wide midfoot. The person I recommended, the Why Not 2, he wanted something with more cushion from what he was playing in, but he didn't want the weight. He didn't want all the support. Cold him to go with these and he's really enjoyed them. All right, the fifth best category is gonna be the best value. So this is gonna be the best bang for your buck. And this is gonna go not necessarily just what's retail price, but maybe also what you can get it for. But I'm gonna give you the best value is really gonna be again from Jordan brand, that's your CP3. That is a $100 retail shoe. I believe Nike has a few for $70 or $80. And then there's even some coupons you can get on top of that, meaning you're able to get these shoes for maybe as low as 60 bucks. Really good deals. I've heard even cheaper on something. That's a shoe with full in carrying bone traction, a nice full, uh, set up for your four foot zoom, just not a little gum strip pad. Uh, and I did try them on in store. The materials were surprising. It's a knit, depending on the shoe, it does have a leather or suede. And even though it's probably fake, it still feels really nice in hand. This is a shoe, maybe I'll get, I'm always looking for the best shoe in performance wise. So I'm not always looking for the best value, but anyone I've talked to, any reviews have been shocked with how good this shoe is. Now it comes into play where this is also a shoe I would recommend along with a really good high value shoe is your Harden Volume 3. With Harden Volume 4 coming out, ditching boost, you're able to get the Harden Volume 3 depending on the colorway. I've seen as low as 75 bucks. Some are still going full retail depending on the colorway, but if you can get it below $100, that's another fantastic all around shoe. That is a low top. The CP3 is kind of a mid. It's not really a low, but it's a really nice shoe overall. Another shout out to Jordan Brand is gonna be their new Jordan Brand Diamond Mid. They also have a Diamond Low coming out. That's a shoe that looks to have really nice support. I think it's $120. The low is gonna be about 110 or 100. Again, really nice values. We're getting a solid shoe with good support, good cushion, uh, traction looks to be really decent and you're not going to have to break the bank. And all of these are shoes you can get at discounts at certain times of the year. But Levi, what about the best traction? All right, I didn't leave a category for traction because every shoe I talk about has to have good traction. Otherwise, it's not even worth it. But if we're going to do a standout for the best traction so far of 2019, and there's been some really good shoes, and that's all of these have good traction, the PG3. This sucker has been ridiculous in traction. Now, this is a very narrow shoe and I actually can't wear it or enjoy it unless I have our velocity cushioned insoles in there. Once I put the insoles in there, it does raise my foot about two millimeters, but that raising of the foot takes my foot just above where I, it's just painful to wear and I can really enjoy it. Now, the traction on this, I did just wear the Kate, the Kobe nines and it's up there guys. So this is some of the, if this fits you, the price on these, the four foot cushion that does take some time to break in and the traction, it really is an awesome, awesome shoe just for traction. Again, all of these are really good. Every single shoe you see behind me has fantastic traction. This is still just a slight edge up over all of them. So definitely want to give a shout out, even though this is not a specific category, to the PG3. Guys, girls, hopefully you enjoyed that video and it gave you some good options depending on what you're looking for for the top five. Now, as far as what's coming out towards the end of the year, we still have the Kyrie 6 coming out. We still have the LeBron 17. We still have the, the KT5. I do have the KT4 coming in, which I'm really excited about. Uh, you have uh, the Harden Volume 4, the Dame 6. Uh, you have a lot of shoes kind of still toward the end of the year. So the best shoe of the year, obviously, is going to be uh, up in the air with the top five where these may change but all of these are really good options and what i enjoy about it is even if you find the best shoe say of last year which i really put the hardened volume three and the why not one chaos both of those if you can find on discount are still really good shoe just because it's aged or it's last year's doesn't mean you're getting 
any less performance value for your money. But these five, you have something for everybody. If you guys have any questions, comments, put them down below. I do try my best to respond to everybody. As always, if you get a shoe and you're looking to add more cushion, definitely check out our Velocity Cushion insoles. They do work really well in the Curry 6, which is an awesome compliment, as well as the Omni 1. So for my court feel options, if I don't need that court feel, but I do just want to enjoy it for maybe a game or two, I throw our Velocity insoles in it and I'm still able to enjoy it the rest of the play. So if I'm there playing for two, three hours, I don't have to wear out my knees, my back, and I still feel good afterwards. Really appreciate all our supporters out there. This is Levi's Sneaker Gears and I'll come at you later.